On screen, you can see a vertical carousel, or three of them to be exact, two going up and one going down. This has not been created with a horizontal carousel rotated. You never want to do that because you're in for a world of pain. Now, I am using Elementor, but the code I'm going to share with you, you could use or apply it with any other WordPress page builder. Now, there are videos and tutorials out there, and I've watched them all, and a lot of them use like a collection of codes and quite a lot of classes that you have to apply to images, etc. I'm going to share with you my way of doing it, and I've come up with a really innovative, easy, simple, easy way to do it. The code is super clever in that it does calculations on the fly automatically after you enter in a few values. What do I mean by that? A lot of tutorials out there are going to give you code, and maybe your carousel has only got three images or six images, or your height is different, you know, bigger or smaller. And the code doesn't work very well, and then you sit there scratching your head trying to work out why. Also, there's no glitchy or jittery effects going on screen. I hope you can see that. We have the carousels going up, they hit the top, and then they come back down and reverse. And the one in the middle goes down, hits a point, and goes back up. And it doesn't reverse until it gets to the final image inside of the carousel. And it's all done within the code. Let me show you how this was built. Everything is done within a parent container, and then we have child container. So we have child container one, child container two, child container three. And then we've got another child container over here where we've got some text. So the parent container, look, you can make it as big as you want, all right? I'm just going to have it as a single container, full width, and I'm going to make the height of it be a VH of 100. If you want to go for 50 VH, 500 pixel, 400 pixel, it's entirely up to you. The code will handle a lot of it for you. And then inside of your container, you can go and style it with your gradient colors, your background images, your overlays, however you want to do it. Now, inside of the parent container, we're going to drop in a child container. We actually need four of them. So let me just go and duplicate that. At the moment, our parent container is set to be a column. So let's just convert that to be a row. For justify content, I'm going to do space evenly, and for align items, I'm going to go for center. So there you go, you can see my four child containers. Now I'm going to set the width. Now, how you do this is entirely up to you. I've gone for three on the side, and I've got text on the right-hand side. You may want to have your verticals on either side and your text in the middle, and you don't even have to have text. You could have icons or other stuff going on. You could have a video as well. For the first three child containers, I'm going to set them to be a full width, and I'm going to set the percentage to be 10, and you can see that over there. I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to paste the style and paste the style again. For the final child container, I'm going to again make that be a full width, but this time I'm going to set the width to be 67. Because I'm using space evenly, it just evenly spaces them out, you know, around and in between. You don't have to go 10, 10, 10, 70, because then they're going to be crammed right up against one another. And I want to have a bit of spacing. Going back to the parent container, I'm now going to zero out my gaps. And then I'm going to add in 10 for the column. So if you hover over it, in between these, there is a 10 pixel gap. Look, if I'd gone and made it be 100, you can see what's going on. So I've made it be 10. Because eventually, when I do start to add in the images, I do want to have this gap sat between them. Into here, you could go and add whatever you want. And I'm, for now, I'm just going to go and copy in some text over here, and I'm going to make it be a dark color just so you can see it. What's really important is what comes next. And this is the thing that no other tutorial has done, okay? And this is my innovative take and way of how to handle vertical carousels. I'm going to go to the first child container and I'm going to zero out the margin and padding. And staying inside that first child container, I'm going to drop in a new subchild, okay? So I'm going to click it. So we now have a subchild within the child container. If you want to rename these parent child subchild, go for it. Inside of the subchild now, again, I'm going to zero out the margin and padding, and then into here is where you will drop the image. Now I want to make a really, really important point. I have only set the height for the parent container. I've set the width for the child containers. I'm not doing it for the subchild because they're contained inside of the child anyway, set to 100%. But I haven't set any height for the child container or the subchild. Everything will be done within the code. And the reason why you want to do it in the code is it's easier and quicker to modify it any single time. So into the subchild that sits inside the child, 
I'm going to drop in, say, five images. Let's click image and then we'll duplicate that. So we now have five images inside of there. Because the container is already defaulted to the column layout, they're all going to be stacked above one another. Now, I'm not going to add in any images here, OK, because you can kind of see the effect but I just want to get across how you build it. And sometimes if I keep it as a wireframe structure, it might sink in better. But if I was going to do images, obviously you go in and pick your image. Now your images don't have to be perfectly portrait or landscape because again, within the code, we're going to set the style for it. There's so much stuff that you're going to be used to doing where you're going to click the image, add the image, go to style, set the height, set the width, you know, do a lot of funky stuff here. Seriously, leave it for the code because it then means that you don't have to go through like 20 different images. Got to give it a class name, got to change the height, got to set the cover. So let's now get onto the coding, okay, before I go and duplicate this. The first thing is that every sub child container, and like I said, I haven't set anything here, I haven't set the height to anything, there's nothing fancy going on except the padding and the margin. You must give it this class name, which is scroll hyphen container. I've zoomed in on my screen just to make that clearer. Your sub child must be called scroll hyphen container. By the way, I should point out that I forgot to add in my gaps. So ensure that your child container and your sub child container have all got zero gap because you don't need to have any yet. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this child. I've already got these two empty ones here just to show you that this is how it would have looked. What I'm going to do is get rid of these two and, and then I'm going to duplicate the first child container because that now will give me three with the sub child and my images. Obviously, you would go and change your images out. Next, we're going to give our child container a class. So the sub child, I've said it a million times now, is scroll hyphen container. But the child container also needs a class name, again, due to the coding. But this is where you get to decide. Do you want the carousels to go down or do you want them to go up? And once you've decided on that, you're going to assign it to the class name of the child. And that probably sounds really confusing, but it's going to hopefully blow your mind right now. I'm going to go to the first child container. I want it to go down. So guess what I'm going to call it on the class? I'm going to go to the CSS class in the advanced tab and I'm going to type down. I also want the third one to go down. So again, advanced, and we're going to say down. The one in the middle, I want it to go up. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab and I'm going to write up. How simple is that? You're not having to mess around or start to go, well, do I need to put this code in or that code in? You assign down or up. So if you've got five carousels, and the first three are going to go down and the last two are going to go up. You just pop the class name into the child container. Now let's go and add in the magic code that makes it all work. I'm going to go to my parent container for this and I'm now going to add in a HTML widget. And to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to go to my parent container and I'm going to set this to wrap. Otherwise, they all sit side by side until infinity, which you don't really want. So we've got our HTML over there. Now into here, I'm going to drop in a bit of code. And as soon as we've done that, it starts moving. Now I do want to point out that if ever things look like they're out of sync or they're not lined up properly or the speed looks a bit weird, that's because we're in the edit with elemental mode. What you do is just go to preview or publish or view it on the live and everything will be synchronized perfectly. What you need to do, and you need to understand this, is make changes at the top over here. The changes you make here, and I will explain it because remember, I didn't set any styling and I said we control everything in the code. What you set here determines what happens here with the movement because it's all about the translate on the Y in terms of how much it moves. Now, to get rid of the glitchy, jittery effect or where sometimes it moves and you get a gap, for anyone who's ever tried vertical carousel, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes it moves up and then you get a gap before the image kind of re-loops or whatever. This works out the exact value you need to have and it calculates it based on what you enter at the top. I've tried to make this code as simple as possible and I would love to know in your comments if so far up until this point you understood what I was doing with the parent, the child container, down and up. Then we have the sub child scroll hyphen container I mean, into there, we dropped the images, but we did not set the height or the width of those sub child or child containers or the images. 
So we're going to do it all here. For your child containers, which were down and up, which is what we have over here, dot down, dot up, what was the height going to be? So I've said the height of those child containers is 500 px. And then down here, it says height variable, and it bases it on the column height, which we've stated there. I've then stated what I want the images to be. And I've said I want them to be 200 pixel. If you want to make them 100 pixel, 300 pixel, whatever you want, you can do that. But you must state it here, which is why I recommend you follow my process where you pop your containers in, you pop your images in, and then you let this handle the code, okay? And don't worry, this is not going to touch every image on your website. It only touches the images that you can see here that sit within the scroll hyphen container, the subchild. So don't worry about images on other pages getting affected by this. They won't be. This is where we're adding in a bit of the blended shadow effect, a uh, fade in, sorry, that we're getting at the top and bottom. If you were to get rid of this, you now would not have that effect. Let's pop that back in. This is the bit that controls how fast and quick it goes. So if I was to go and do something like this and change this to be one second, and I do the same for the down as well, it can you just see what it's doing? A bit crazy, right? So if you want to make it faster or slower, you can go and do that. And that's the other really cool thing about this bit of code. You could, if you want, add your own class name. So you don't just have down up. You could have down underscore slow. And then you could then add in the class name here and you can add it over there as well. And you might have a slower one and then you've got others that are quicker. This code is so versatile and built for you to bespokely customize it to work for you. As I've already mentioned for the images, we go and set the height of the image and it's controlled by this variable here. We've also gone and set the gap. So I said zero out the row and columns for the child and the subchild because I'm controlling it here. So if I decide I now want to have the gap set at, say, uh, 20, I can increase it or I could go for 50. Now, there's a reason why I've said do this here, and I'm going to get right to that right at the bottom. And I've also decided on what are the number of images. This is important. If you were going to have six images in here, you must state the number six because it's important for the calculation that works out the translate Y. Down here is where it's now using all of those variables. So your column height, your image height, the number of images and your row gap. Believe it or not, that row gap makes a difference as well. And, and that's basically it, right? A lot of formulas out there are going to give you a value like uh, minus 100% or 130%. Um, and that's great for the demo or the example that you're watching the tutorial. But the minute you go and add three images, eight images, it ain't going to work for you, all right? And you're going to sit there second guessing what the values are. When you apply the values here, it will change it for you. That's literally how amazing this is. But what about when you get to the tablet and the mobile? So on the desktop, these are set to be 10% each. When we get to the tablet, they're set to be 30% each. And when we get to the mobile, they're again set to be 30%. Or you could maybe hide them or you may decide we're only going to show one or two, you know, responsibly hide them. And believe me, when you look at this on an actual mobile phone, it looks so sweet. I wanted to keep this tutorial as simple as possible and I've probably gone through steps, but it shouldn't be that difficult to imitate what I did here. You know, your parent, your child, your subchild your image is in there, you let the code handle the styling and the calculation, and you will then have a really amazing looking hero banner on your website that you were probably using other third party add-ons, or you were using other codes, and there's nothing wrong with using other methods, but you may have found there was a bit of a glitch or a jittery effect, or you found that you had to pop classes in everywhere, you had to drop code or something into column one, column two, column three. And then when you start to tinker with it, you're kind of going back and forth and, you know, to and fro with yourself and the fun out of building kind of goes away. You can now do it thanks to this bit of code. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time for the pain.